Hi, my name is Yi Xianzheng. Today I'll tell you a brief story about how I grew up during Cultural Revolution, dreaming about becoming a writer, but ended up doing science for the last 24 years. Um, I actually think my generation, even though we grew up during Cultural Revolution, was very fortunate. Well, I, I think for those of you who don't know Cultural Revolution, it was a pretty miserable time for the country for many people living in that era. Uh, it continued for uh, 20, 30 years, and there was a lot of disruption for the country. But as a child growing up, um, I think it was actually quite enjoyable. Um, for example, um, we really didn't have many classes to take. We, I remember studying uh, math, Chinese, and political uh, science, and really political science con constitutes of studying Chairman Mao's books and uh, some other slogans and propaganda. Um, because scholastic achievements were not really valued that much, we really didn't have much pressure. And um, also, there wasn't much uh, after school activities. We had a huge amount of time on our, on our hands. We got to really uh, figure out ways to entertain ourselves. My parents both taught in Chongqing University. Chongqing is a city located in Sichuan province. And if you happen to like Chinese food, you might have tasted a very spicy, um, lip lumming Sichuan cuisine. That's the city I grew up. In those days, anybody who worked for a university get to live on campus. And the, I remember the campus we had lived on was actually quite beautiful. There were large fish ponds that were used to raise fish for everybody as food. Um, there were also large meadows and uh, very nice woods, wooded areas. The one edge of the campus actually is perched over a cliff overlooking Jali River. My apartment where my parents lived in and uh, my school were, happened to be actually on opposite end of the campus. So every day I had to walk through the campus to go to school. Um, every day after school, I and my friends would be roaming around the campus, climbing anything we could climb, uh, checking out all the nooks and crannies of all the buildings. We really loved checking out insects, catching them and studying them, studying all the plants and flowers. Um, we loved to catch tadpoles and take them home, put them in the bottle and raise them to uh, a frog and let them go on the meadows. I raised rabbits, I raised chickens. I also learned how to plant vegetables and sold them to my parents to, to make some spending money. But what I liked the most was to read novels. Even though we didn't have a whole lot of variety in terms of novels, we did get to read those translated novels from the old Russia or Soviet Union. We were actually very lucky. Those novels were um, quite uh, amazing, um, really outstanding literature. I had, from those readings, I had always wanted to become a writer, to write those exciting and very touching novels. That life, that very uh, idyllic life, suddenly came to an end with the end of the Cultural Revolution. Of course, it's great. The Cultural Revolution has ended and everybody was really happy, especially our parents, because our age group still had two to three years to make, some, make up some education gaps. And another very important thing that's really fortunate for us was that we finally got the opportunity to go to university based on our test scores instead of based on our birth class. Um, suddenly, the daily heavy studying, uh, homework and quizzes returned with vengeance and without warning. Um, suddenly also test scores become the most important thing. And you know, every test, your scores along with everybody else in the class is posted on the wall and you get to see exactly where you ranked. And the idea was to encourage everybody to study harder. But it was actually very hard, very competitive, especially for my class group, because all the kids are very bright. They came from the best, they came as the best of their class in schools throughout the city. Um, for me, I really never got used to that intensity of studying. Also, I 
really was very attracted to read a lot of new novels that had become available after Cultural Revolution. So oftentimes I would hit, hit the novels in my drawer to read them while I was supposed to be doing problem sets. Luckily, there was only about two years and I managed to be able to stay in the middle of the pack in my class. And also I managed to get into a university even though my parents weren't particularly happy that I was never um, on the top of my class or getting into, a getting into the best university in China, such as Beijing or Tsinghua University. I did get into a university, so they didn't give me too much trouble. Um, after about 12 hours negotiation uh, in terms of what I would major, my parents and I made a concession that I would major in biology. So I went to Sichuan University, majored in biology. But after the, uh, after the university, after four years, I again went against my uh, parents' uh, wishes to not continue my education in graduate school. I went to work as a teaching assistant in the Southwestern Agricultural University, which is local, located in the rural parts of Chongqing. My idea was every day after work, I would be able to have enough time to really start writing. But after a year, I realized actually to write the stories as good as those that had touched me so deeply was very, very difficult. And since life was quite boring because the university is localized, located in the, basically in the countryside, there wasn't much to do after work. I got increasingly restless and um, really want to change my life. And my parents really, my parents saw the opportunity to finally help me to get rid of my dream of becoming a writer. My dad told me, okay, um, you are frustrated with your writing. Why don't you go abroad to study and to see the world? Perhaps after you're studying, after traveling and seeing the world, you'll have some interesting stories to write about. I actually didn't like the idea about going abroad to study biology, but that was my only option. I think what really got me going was to the, the idea of going abroad to see the world. So that's how I managed to come to America. And I have been in this country for 24 years and I have been doing biological research ever since. It is actually um, the logic of genetic screens that attracted me to join Dr. Burl Oakley's lab at the, university, at the uh, Ohio State University. Um, in uh, Burroughs lab, I studied microtubules and cell division. I continued the study of cell division in Dr. Bruce Alberts and Dr. Tim Mitchison's lab in San Francisco, where I have actually learned how to do biochemistry, how to use in vitro assays to study cell division. So I have so far studied cell division for 24 years. Uh, about five years ago, our studies of cell division has had inspired us to initiate a new research angle in my lab. That is to try to understand whether cytoskeletons such as microtubules could influence chromatin organization within the nucleus uh, during the development and disease state. This new research direction has been quite difficult because we had to learn a lot of new techniques and a lot of new areas of bi biology that weren't familiar to us. And there was definitely times that I wondered whether I had made a huge career mistake by not focusing on cell division, on studying something I knew how to study, that I had expertise. But after thinking back and forth, my conclusion had always been I would never be able to pass up the opportunity to study something that really inspires me. To me, doing research, especially biological research, is like making journeys. You can choose to take a well-traveled road. That kind of road is safer. It will probably get you to your destination faster. You'll be more productive. But if you really get inspired and you have some ideas, those ideas could lead to bigger discoveries. As scientists, you have the opportunity to choose the less traveled road to explore. You may not be appreciated for quite a while, but your ideas, your inspiration should keep you going for quite a while despite of the difficulties. And if you in the end succeed to make some exciting discoveries, you'll become the happiest and most content person in the world. I think this is probably the reason why whenever you ask a scientist whether they like their job, they will always tell you this is an exciting career. 
um, I think that's also the reason why I have been doing science for 25 years.